Welcome to Care Talk, your American home for incisive debate about healthcare business and policy. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. David, what have you been up to? <laughs> well, John, you know, I was getting a little depressed because 2020, I thought, well, it's, a, it's an Olympics year, it's a national convention year, and then, you know, the Olympics are canceled and the convention's virtual. And I was sad, John, because, you know, you're, you usually you're probably, hang out. I don't know. You're probably better off to di- di- consume digitally. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy that we're in different locations. Yeah, so well, few, fewer hangovers, John. But yeah, and your point is. And so what, what do you think of these unconventional conventions? Well, John, I, I, I decided to, uh, you know, watch and I, I like watching. And uh, the first thing I noticed you is uh, I, I noticed somebody who's- a lot of time on your hands. I, know, I, I do, John. Listen, yeah, I was watching- people, I, was, I was just listening to Satya Nadella the other day, the CEO of Microsoft, and he said, 30 minutes, people are just worn out digitally. Yeah. But you can go for hour. I can go. Hour of I can go on. I, I'm like one of those Twitch guys, John, playing video games. But I was listening to the. Uh, I was listening to this this recording and seeing this video on the Democratic National Convention about healthcare. And this guy recognized his voice. This guy, Jeff Bridges, talking about healthcare. Ooh, the dude from the Great Lebowski. Yes, actually, you know, Jeff Bridges is a pretty interesting cat. In addition to being an Let's call him an unconventional character actor. Yes. Uh, Great Lebowski being one of my favorites. Big, the Big Lebowski, John. Oh, sorry, the Big Lebowski. You're, you're confusing the Big Lebowski and Great Santini. Let's, Come on, let's, let's go. Let's focus on the. I'm going to smack you in the back of the head, okay. like me guy. Um, but I can't because you're not here. Uh, yeah, he's also been a great advocate, actually, for against child poverty and poverty in general. He's actually a, a pretty big activist. I guess you probably missed that since you've been watching movie after movie and hanging out watching the convention. But he's been a pretty good, pretty pretty creative and thoughtful and passionate advocate to make sure kids don't go hungry. Well, John, you know, I think that's right. And in the, uh, in the, in, in the video, uh, there was a narration and talking about Biden building on Obamacare, which of course he was part of. It's a real area to emphasize from a policy standpoint and also from a personal standpoint. The Biden family's been through a lot. Most recently, the death of uh, Biden's son, Bo. They also uh, brought the clear message about expanding coverage, protecting Obamacare, and were able to bring in John McCain's legacy uh, as part of their effort to show that the former you know, and current uh, GOP leaders are in support of Biden. So I think they had their act together on that. Republicans are also emphasizing uh, health care, which is a bit of a head scratcher, given what they've managed not to accomplish. Well, I, 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 what? The Republicans are advocating for more health care or standing on their the failed record of managing the pandemic. Like, what do you mean they're talking about healthcare? That's kind of hard. That's a hard. That's a that's a hard one for me. It's a tough one to, to swallow, John. It's like one of those horse pills. You know, it's kind of hard to to bring it down without getting hey, stuck David, in your throat. David, they've had three years, three, more, almost four years, for the White House. All those brilliant people in the White House, the that that, that are genius of an HHS secretary, Alex Azar. Uh, we're supposed to, according to internal, internally, he's considered one of the smarter guys from a policy perspective. They control the Senate with, you know, Dr. Cassidy and all these other healthcare experts, and they haven't come up with uh, even a plan for a bill that they could bring to the floor or a platform uh, a policy from the White House. I mean, what what do you mean they're standing there? They're, well, at they're, the, at the convention, they did a few things. You know, one thing is that... Uh, they didn't talk too much about Obamacare, except Trump said they uh, they knocked out Obamacare, and then they also brought a bunch of frontline workers. You miss the fact that that that, that there's a, there's there's a, a court case on Obamacare. So if it's knocked it out, how why were they still trying? Yeah, to Yeah, well, they tried to undermine it. You know, they they think let, they basically let's, let's leave the details aside. So all right, all right. How did they argue? Are they against healthcare? Because it seems like that's kind of their position. No, though they said that they wanted, you know, they want to kind of take a free market approach. I, I thought it was quite telling, John, that we had a couple of speakers. You know, on the Democratic side, we had Addy Barkan, who is an ALS patient. Um, he's dying. Difficult, a difficult neurological disease where where the 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 end the the result can be slightly postponed, but it's awful. You lose control of of your body, and and now it's a it's a brutal disease. So and here's Addie, a good. Yeah, Addy's been yeah. a great advocate for. Medicare for all, and for the and 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 a, and a very very clear uh, uh, critic of the of the un, 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 unfair maze of trying to navigate healthcare if you've got a complex condition. That's right. So the Democrats weren't afraid to put him up, even though Biden's position is much more of an incremental building on uh, Obamacare. But everybody's trying to get to universal coverage and toward toward a Medicare for all, even if not you know 
in the first or second uh, Biden at term. Point. At some point. Yeah, at some point. But meanwhile, the contrast, John, so now I'm watching the GOP convention and I see this woman get up there and I, I assumed it was the, the press secretary or a Fox News person because she fit the visual profile. Young, was she white, was she blonde, 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 red yeah. dress, you know, skinny, all this stuff. Now it turns out she's up there to talk about right to try. Now, right to try is a big deal. And John, we did an episode on that some time ago. And it was like, we had like more than 100,000 people watching it. Very, very interesting thing. As so usually you were against it, but yeah, against, we yeah, we were against it because we, we thought, okay, I, I, I so I'm trying to be, yeah. I'm trying to do my best to be open-minded, John. And so that's, I'm that's saying, a stretch. That's a stretch. That's, that's good. I that's tried good. hard. I tried hard, John. I, I, I kind of held, I held my head. <laughs> I held my eyes open and, and she talked about how she had bone cancer and my how God. she would have died without Trump because she could, yeah, because she couldn't, she couldn't get access to these drugs. Nobody would put her in a clinical trial. And so I said, well, okay. Oh, so maybe, maybe possibly there were a few people that were helped sounds by like, right yeah, to try. That yeah. yeah, sounds like a hard story. Yeah. yeah. And she railed against the individual mandate as well. So then later I'm reading about this as I'm trying to learn some more. And it turns out, guess what, John? She wasn't helped by right to try. In fact, her therapy was an approved drug. Uh, an immunotherapy drug that just was approved for a different condition. So it's an off-label use, which oh, is she, totally standard. Always get that drug. Yeah, that's uh, well, are you suggesting that she might have been misleading? <laughs> yeah, she's lying. And the, my other question is with the individual mandate, I mean, if you talk oh, about a pre-existing the condition. The individual I mean, mandate is something that Newt Gingrich was for before he was against. It's an elemental part of Romney Care. And it was originally sort of contributed to the conversation by the insurance companies who realize they need to balance the risk pools. The individual mandate, it's, 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 it's like the president's obsession with bathrooms and, and, and flushing. It's unclear that there, it's, it's a fact-free criticism because the individual mandate, what that means is that people have to, you, you actually have to include a larger number of people in insurance pools in order to bring down the cost for all of us. I, it, it became a rallying cry for the Republicans, and but it, 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 it doesn't really tie to anything. It's kind of it, well, undermining it, insurance. It's kind of incongruous that it was all in this one thing. And I, they can illustrate it pretty simply how this is all related. So let's say you know she had cancer and she had a drug that cost 50000 or $100,000. Now she's going to be uninsurable unless you make people, make insurance companies insure people with pre-existing conditions. And if you do that, then of course it does raise the price for everybody, including healthy people. Um, but she couldn't get insurance otherwise. Don't you think your party's going to have a hard time selling the notion that they're not against pre-existing conditions, but they don't have a plan to insure you. So for the non-insurance plan that you're probably not going to be afford or be able to get, there will be no pre-existing condition. I mean, the whole- it, it, Give me a headache, John. Yeah, well, think about it. We we have a at least the Democrats have a platform. How do how do the Republicans get away with a convention without a platform? A platform being the the what the party's current positions are around a number of different issues. If they don't know what they're for on different issues, David, what are they for? They're for whatever Trump is for, and they're also currently for um, you know suing uh, to overturn Obamacare. And the Supreme Court is supposed to hear that. Now, conveniently, they've decided to hear it the week after the election. How's that going to play out? What are the what are the Republicans going to do if he changes his mind? Are they going to change as well? I mean, the whole thing is ludicrous. Um, yeah, they're I, going to, John. That's how it's working. Have you noticed? They like no, Russia. They don't like Russia. I mean, I, I come think, on. I think I think, I think the, 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 the court is trying to avoid politics, which is almost impossible around these issues. That's probably why they kicked the can on the Obamacare conversation. But it really is a toxic two-step for the Republican Party, because if they knock down Obamacare, since we've now demonstrably proven there is no policy or plan for to, to provide affordable health care to Americans... Um, care, coverage will fall and rage will rise. Um, if they don't, if they lose again, which they've lost repeatedly at the state and the federal level around the constitutionality, they will be left with building them on Obamacare, and uh, th that that's uh, that, that that will be an interesting legacy for the Republicans. But I think that the the bigger 
concern from my perspective. David, healthcare is going to be on everyone's mind. Yeah. And as will the mismanagement and the chaotic mismanagement of the the basics of this pandemic, because just to remind what everyone, pandemic? The, the, we, the have, previous, yeah. we have we have we have the highest mortality statistics, the worst controls of any industrialized country, and we've got the best and most expensive healthcare system. How the White House can bungle this? But you're not telling me they really think they're going to be able to avoid. <laughs> well, John, here's the thing. Come on. We're getting, we're getting to the end of our time together today, but I, I got to bring up this one thing that's related, John, which is, you know, the CDC changes recommendations this week at the direction of the White House about uh, testing. So now they decide. What, uh, happened to, what happened to Dr. Fauci? Wasn't, yeah. he, wasn't Doc, he part of that? Dr. Fauci, I say the voice of Dr. Fauci. Well, here's the thing, John. He is an older guy who's been using his vocal cords a lot. He had to have surgery on his vocal cords. And at the time of this did discussion- re- Did the White House remove his vocal cords? <laughs> no, but at the time, next best thing. At the time that he was in surgery under general anesthesia, they decided that was the time to have the discussion about changing the policy. So he couldn't speak and he was asleep. Uh, and then he woke up and it was changed. Oops. <laughs> oh, God. So that's how they know. That's governance, John. Oh, I mean, we, we, uh, 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 it's hard yes. to imagine how we're going to navigate out of this pandemic unless we work with doctors, scientists, and experts. And you, that, that I think will ultimately be the Achilles heel of your president. All right, John. Well, you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit better. But right now, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap up this edition of Care right. Talk, where we've been talking about the. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it right up, John. We've been talking about the national. I want to know no? how the okay. party is going to sell. Healthcare and and policy without a heart. The only way the Republicans, your party, are going to win, the party of of Teddy Roosevelt, of Reagan, of the Bushes, is when they in Eisenhower when they came to the uh, Bush with, with when they when they came to the country with po- conservative Nixon, policies yeah. with a heart. Even even Nixon had a great has some great healthcare policies actually that were pretty generous. I, I don't know how you run on that. The the Democrats I thought really did a nice job at infusing pretty complicated policy issues. With heart. You try to beat that, David. I, I just don't, it's certainly in healthcare. I don't know how you win. All right. Well, nonetheless, that's it for another edition of Care Talk. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. Thanks for listening. Hey there, listeners. Want more Care Talk? There's more to be had in our other episodes. So be sure to look for those and subscribe to Care Talk on your favorite service.